Now, obviously, the injuries play a part, but what do you make of the defense the last four or five games and uh, maybe wasn't what is the same as you all were doing most of the season? Um, people are breaking us down a little bit on the bounce, and we're not uh, covering it as well. And it's at a couple positions. And the great thing about this game is um, if you have a weakness out there, the other team's going to exploit it. So we're working on individuals, and we're working on some team stuff. but. I come back to this to you guys. The teams we're playing right now in this league, I don't understand why we're not talking to eight teams in our league, including Florida, who beat Auburn. Uh, well, uh, they're 500 in your league. or they're one- What? Well, what does that mean? Well, in another league, wait a minute, we're the best league. Then no one should get a 500 team in. Why would that be? I mean, Florida beat Ohio State. So uh, I don't get all this, but the teams we're playing are really good, which is why I come back to 75 to 80 points. You score 75 to 80, even if we struggle some defensively, that should be enough. The whole point of this is winning. Yeah, John, you've talked on occasions this year about that 30% of your shots are going to be from three-point range. I'm kind of Some, A little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the game. How do you kind of settle on that philosophy that, you know, if it's 20% of the end of year, that's not enough. If it's 40, that's maybe too high. Where's that middle ground? How did that develop for you? Just how we you go through the years and you say, okay, over my however many years I coached, to, you know, You know, I'm 52 now, so I've coached a long time. But what you end up doing is you look at the stats historically, and they've been about the same. Um, Field goal percentage has gone from 50 to between 50 and 41. We've had teams that shot 41%, yet won 26, 27 games. Um, Three-point field goal percentage has hovered between 31 and 38. Um, it's, it's gone from a team shooting 27, 26% to 32, 33%. So, you know, you, you play the game to win. What I know, the staples of a winning team start on defense and it's team defense and it's guarding the ball and it's low field goal percentage, high rebound averages. And then on offense, It becomes, again, uh, what kind of balance do you have? In my mind, instead of one or two guys averaging 25, how about we get five or six guys averaging double figures with the leading score getting 16 or 17? That's been a formula for us, again, over 30-some years, 40 years that's worked. And it's been good for the players. So not only do you win at a high level, um, the players succeed at a high level. Kyle Tucker. Well, I know you, you talked about you don't want an alibi for anybody, so uh, excuses. But how much do you think just sort of the continuity get, getting to the fact that your two best perimeter defenders were in and out, out for a couple games completely? Disrupted sort of the the what you had going most of the season defense. Well, you can look at it the other way. We found out that Davion may be our best defender and could do it for 40 minutes if he had to, um, that Kellen is a better defender and ball handler than we thought he was. Um, um, but, you know, I, I think, again, when you look, who's getting beat on the bounce and how do we improve those guys? Uh, I've had guys before where when they their man catches the ball, we accept the fact that they can't move their feet and we yell red. Red means everybody in, help this man before he gives up another layup. And, and so you challenge the guy, look, we're here for you, but stay in front. And uh, I think guys are working at it. We'll see going forward. Um, if I have to do some more things and scramble up a little bit, we'll try that. But let me tell you, the worst thing I did today is I watched Florida-Auburn down in Florida. Why do I do that? 
before we play a team. I mean, they they played smart. They played tough. They rebounded. They flew. They ran their stuff, had great spacing, and beat a really, really good team. Um, so as much as I'm worried about this, I'm worried about let's worry about playing our best both offensively and defensively, giving yourselves a chance to win on the road. Yeah, uh, not really follow, but another question. You've talked you talk a lot every year about empowerment. When you look out there at the end of the year and you see your team, you say, okay, they are. They they get it. And is this team there yet? Yeah, because yeah, they're be- they're uh, I'll give you what Kellen did at the end of the last game, walked up to me and said, Coach, you gotta get Davion out so he can get his applause. And I looked, I said, You're right. Bang, we got him out. Um you have in huddles, guys speaking up, not afraid, um, you know, talking to each other, talking to me. Um, am I ready to just sit down and watch them? I think I got to help them a little bit, but it's not where we were at the beginning of the year. They get it. And I got a really smart team. They're really smart. Um, you know, you, you're talking about a team that, that can talk to each other. They don't need a board. They they know when they say something to each other what they're talking about. Jerry Tipton. You, you, you talk about every game being a Super Bowl for the opponent, and I've asked some of the other people, how, how challenging is that for your guys to play 20-some Super Bowls in a season? Well, it, it's – it's hard, but let me say this. What's more rewarding knowing you're getting the other team's best and you still win? And I'll say this. The, the second thing it does, um, we know when another team plays their best how we have to play because we've done it all year. And I believe it gets us ready for March. And, and teams play well in our building. It's a big game to come to rough. I mean, come on now. You're talking Mississippi, and you're telling me they're the 12th best team in our league? Well, then how good is our league? They got a seven-footer. They had a guard that scored 25, and they got two players out that are injured. I mean, I come back to um, – it, it just disappoints me when I'm, I'm not here, and they should get eight teams in. They should have eight teams. And there's, you know, well, what about oh, – okay, if we're the best league. Forget about all this, well, conference this and that. We're the best league. That's what should be happening. And I'm anxious to see our top four teams. Are they all in different regions? They should be. Why wouldn't they be in a different region? All four of the top teams. And so, he had three of the top four in the same region. No, that's what, that's what, what. And then everybody's got a question. Are these a bunch of guys with cigars in a room smoking, saying this is what we're going to do to this and this, and we're going to do this and this? That's why I keep saying the transparency, where we pushed, give us the top 16 teams early. So if someone wins out, you can't say, yeah, they moved down. Can't do it. You've already given it. But there's other things in this. When your league is the best league, your top four teams should be in different regions. It's a given. Do it. No question. And so, like I said, our top four teams, wow. Are they good? And are they playing well? Um, And then there's us. We're like hanging out. Like, what what are we right now? Being injured, playing this, going on the road, having our chances. Um, You know, they call it the luck factor. There was a matrix put out about different stuff, and we're in that far corner. We're not at home and not on the road. And then there's other teams on the road. I mean, there's all kind of interesting things out there, not from fan websites, but that talk about it. Now, all I'm saying to my team, everything I've done all year is to prepare you for March. You won't believe this. We're in March right now. Let's see what happens. Hard game down there now. Always is a hard game. Mike's done a great job with his team. Um, They're going to be prepared. The things we hurt them with up here, I promise you, we won't hurt them with down there. You won't believe this. They watch tape too. 
And so it'll be, uh, you know, but I, why why should they have to beat us to get in? I think that's a bunch of crap. I do. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. You mentioned uh, numerous of times how enjoy to coach this team this season. And my question to you is, with the big games ahead of you, what makes this team so good, so effective, and so enjoyable for you to coach? Um, because they're terrific teammates. When when you have players and, and the people around them so into themselves and truly don't know other players' names, they're only concerned about what's happening, it affects your team. When you walk in and you see these players absolutely cheering for the other players, you, you, you understand they get the culture here. The culture, if you want to survive at Kentucky, you got to be about each other. You can't be about yourself or you can't play here. You got to be about each other. And if someone else is playing well, that doesn't infringe on your success. That may challenge you to work harder, but that kind of stuff, walking in practice, I mean, Doc Rivers talked about Tyrese Maxey. And you know what he said? This dude's happy every day because he's comfortable in his own skin. And if someone else has success, he's happy. But he's good in what he's doing. Emmanuel, quickly, they said, there's no one that's ever worked harder. And every time I see him, he smiles at me. I can go right down the line of the guys here. And when you have that, you know, it's you, 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 unless you, you, there's a couple years that you don't, and it's, you know, coming in and every day is like going to the dentist. We haven't had many here in my 13 years. We've had a couple. But, um, you know, this is a fun team who cares about each other, who wants guys that aren't playing as much. They want Lance to do well. They want Damian to do well. They want Bryce to do well. And it, I went to stick someone in the last game, and some the guy he was going in for made a big-time play. And the guy said, leave him in. I can't even remember who it was because it happens all the time. Leave him in. That's what we got going. John and the child. Hey, John, first of all, I don't think going to the dentist is that bad. But uh, this time of the year, you preach fresh minds, fresh legs. And as a coach, I, I see you expend a lot of energy out there. And you say you're 52. I thought you were only 49. But how... How are you holding up? And even more importantly, how do you hold up during the course of the grind of a long season? Like, well, I, I, I've, I get pretty well set in a schedule um, in what I do every day and how I do it. And I go to bed early. But I will tell you that yes, or Wednesday was a tough day because I had to get up in the morning. You guys know I go to Mass and I was in Philly, so I went to Mass go grab my coffee, go work out, and had to drive an hour and a half to New Jersey north to watch a practice, got back in the car, drove an hour 45 to go see a game, watch that, got back in the car, watched the second half of the 76 or Nick game because I could get there in time. Um, and then I'm in bed by 11. That was a hard day for me, but that was an unusual day for me. Um, but normally I'm on a set schedule of what I do. And a big part of that is what I do in the morning refreshes my, me and, and, and gets my mind right. And then working out, you know, I lift weights and do that. I know you can't tell. Oh, I lift though. You know, um, so you can't really see it. The shirt kind of hides, you know, the, so you can't see it, but, and, and you know, but I, the problem I have is I'm great all day until I eat dinner. And then I eat like I'm going to the electric chair tomorrow. And that's a problem. I wish I could stop, but it's how I grew up, and it is what it is. Your sort of your SEC tournament feelings or conference tournament feelings known in the past. I, I want this is such a, a strange ride. Like, how do you balance wanting to get back clear? all your guys versus three games in three days seems like the worst possible thing for a team that stay healthy all year. <laughs> and, and, you know, because we're the one playing on Sunday, when will they have us playing? If we played on Sunday, that you know we're playing on Thursday. 
and they'd put us in the Tuesday game if we were four in. They they would do that last four. So all I would tell you is everything we do, let's play well for us. If that means win, we move on. If that means lose, let's we're good, let's go. The tournament starts that next weekend. So I've never put a big emphasis on conference tournaments. I never have. Um, we're playing that for the seed. That's why we play it. Now, what's happened, Kyle, by taking that approach? Well, Sunday doesn't matter. Is this, is what's this happened your- to my teams historically at UMass and Memphis and here in the conference tournaments? You get there and it doesn't affect the seeding. Well, you don't follow anything. We've won a bunch of them in the teens because we're not worried about winning them. We're doing it for the seed. But, you know, trying to get kids in that frame of mind, I, you know, I talked to this team yesterday about that. I mean, this game could be the first of that. You know, it's more about seed than anything else at this time of the year. I mean, whatever happens in the game, I don't think it should have much effect. It didn't, Kansas losing to TCU didn't have much effect. I mean, it's just all these teams lost on the road didn't have much effect you know, impact. So I would imagine there won't be much impact for us. So you're not worried about playing that way. You're playing to win. Don't worry about losing, just play to win. And then we'll figure out what happens after, you know, forget about the outcome. The outcome's going to be what it is. Let's worry about us.